bless all of you this morning. And I'm so glad to be able to come one more time into your homes, into your presence, to bring you a word from the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Continue to pray as I am still now being treated for my voice. We're finding now that <clears throat> it's my uh, larynx and I have recently been diagnosed with um, a larynx neuropathy which means the nerves that affect my larynx, which causes all of the mucus, all of everything to be out of whack. And <clears throat> as a result, that's what's happening. Amen. But I tell you, I'm just praising God and going on in his name. And your prayers are being answered as the doctors are now being able to find out and to diagnose and to treat my voice. So I thank you, all of you, all of my loved ones for continuing to keep me and to lift me in prayer. Today, I want to come to you with a wonderful sermon, one that's going to probably really challenge a lot of us. <clears throat> and I want you to get your Bible and turn to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15. St. John chapter 15 is a very familiar portion of scripture where Jesus himself is speaking and he's talking to his disciples and he's letting them know that he is the vine and, he, and we are the branches. And I think this is so befitting now because it's spring. I just was walking my dog the other day and I saw how a lot of my neighbors are pruning their trees, cutting back dead limbs, tree limbs that are not producing like they should. That's what this <clears throat> lesson is about today. So I want to talk to you about living to bear fruit. Living to bear fruit. Let's begin with verse 16. Jesus himself says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatever ye shall ask of the father in my name, he may give it to you. He goes on to say these things, I command you that ye love one another. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, <coughs> excuse me, therefore the world hateth you. And that should be some consolation to all of us who are rooted and grounded in Christ. He's letting us know that because we are not in the world, we're not of the world, we don't belong to the world, that the world does hate us because of what we are, who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so when we talk about living to bear fruit, you see very clearly in verse 15, Jesus says, I have chosen you. Now, let's not mistake this for salvation. Because when you think of a branch being attached to the vine, it's already there. It's not being put there. When you are saved, you're already in Christ. The question then comes, are you saved? Are you already in Christ? Are you rooted in him? Have you been planted and grounded in him? If not, we're going to talk to you a little later on. But this is for those of us <clears throat> who are already saved. We know that we are and that we are living a life pleasing to God and a life that he wants us to bear fruit. Amen. When you look at this particular portion of scripture, 
from before the beginning of the world, God has chosen each and every born again believer to bear fruit for his glory. Amen. From the point of your salvation, the Lord is saying to you, I want you to consider these three things. From the point of your salvation, the day that you gave your life to Christ and accepted and trusted him as Savior and Lord, I want you to know, are you a born again believer? Are you sure of that? I didn't say, are you a church member? Do you love God? I said, are you a born again believer in Jesus Christ? Number two, are you consistently, <clears throat> are you consistently on a regular basis bearing fruit for the glory of God? And thirdly, what is the description of the fruit that we are talking about that we should be bearing? So let's go over that again. Are you a believer today? Are you bearing fruit? And are you aware of what that fruit is? We're going to be discussing that today as we go through our sermon. I want us to look at the first part of that chapter. The Lord Jesus presents himself as the true vine and that God, his father, is the husbandman or the caretaker. So you have Jesus who is the vine. God, his father, comes and caretakes. Secondly, Jesus is the source of our fruit bearing. And God, the father, is the producer of our fruit bearing. Now, please look at that. When you are in Christ, when you are part of the vine, you get your source of strength and energy, <clears throat> your ability to bear fruit as a result of being in Christ. But it is also God the Father who prunes, who nurtures, who fertilizes it so that it will produce even more. Amen. Thirdly, the Father purges, strengthens, and rewards the fruit bearers. Did you hear me? The Father purges, and he strengthens, and he rewards the fruit bearers. When we talk about him purging, the scriptures say that every branch that does not bear fruit it is cut off. <clears throat> if there's something in you, in your life, that is not pleasing to God, that is hindering you from producing and bearing fruit, God will allow it to be cut off because it is sapping the source of your strength. <clears throat> Anyone who knows about plants, green plants, Every now and then you'll see some yellow leaves all over the plant. Well, it's important that those leaves be taken off. They're dead. But for some unknown reason, because they're still attached to that plant, they are straining the plant's growth. They are hindering the plant's growth. And so as a result, they have to be purged, pruned, taken off in order for the life that comes through the vine through the plant will come up into those leaves that are trying to produce. God does the same thing in our lives. <clears throat> Some of us, if we're honest with ourselves, have things, have people, have associates, have affiliations, have habits that you need to have pruned. You need to be purged of those things in order for you to really effectively bear fruit for Christ. Now, there's no need of us trying to deceive the Lord because we're only going to deceive ourselves. There's something there that goes for all of us. And we need to go before God and ask him to purge us that we might be strengthened 
But the beautiful part about it also is, is that he will reward us when we are purged and strengthened. Your new life comes. Revitalization comes. New leaves come. New opportunities. Everything. And so as a result, we need not to fight the Lord on these issues. Just confess and repent of it. Next, <clears throat> Jesus himself speaks of two types of branches. Amen. Branches that, first of all, branches that bear fruit. And that's those who are mature, obedient believers. Now, I pastor for 30 years, and I am fully aware that everybody in the church is not a mature, obedient believer. They're there. Many are there and decide to be disobedient regardless of what they're being taught. But this is for those the Lord is saying, I am aware that you are there, that you are obeying me, and that you do want to produce fruit. You want to grow. You want to produce for me and for the kingdom. Amen. And then he speaks of those, amen, that do not bear fruit. Freeloaders, that's what I call them. You're just riding a free horse to death. That's what my mother said. Those who are immature and disobedient. Here's the sad part. They're believers. They're in the body of Christ. And yet they're walking in blatant disobedience when they know what they have been commanded to do and have decided they are not going to do it. Now let's look at that for example. You can point them out hook, line, and sinker because when you are not bearing fruit, when you are not producing fruit, you look almost like the dead in the world. Amen. People look at that branch and say, what is that branch still on that tree for? It needs to be cut down. That's how people look at those who are immature, disobedient. What are you here for? Why do you come week after week when you already know you are not going to do the will of the Father? Amen. Next, Jesus is making the point that every true mature believer will bear spiritual fruit to the glory of God. When you are a true believer, Knowing that you are, I can't determine that for you. I will not speak against anybody. You have to judge yourself whether you are mature. Because first of all, we need to understand God knows if you're mature. God knows if your desire is to be mature. Amen. And if you are a true believer, you will bear fruit. Because it's just your natural compulsion. As all of the energy, all of the resources, all of the spiritual growth, all of it that Christ plants in you and allows to run through you will ultimately cause you to produce fruit. Amen. Jesus indicates that spiritual fruit bearing is progressive, meaning there's a point where it begins, but it never ends. <clears throat> it is a continuous thing, and it increases with spiritual maturity. For example, when you are first saved, you might be a little fearful or apprehensive about speaking for Christ, but as you grow, as you see that others are coming to know the Lord, because of you, because of your life, because of your testimony, because of your witness to the effects of the gospel, then you become stronger. You become a greater witness for the Lord. And people are more inclined to believe the gospel. They're more inclined to believe the word when they see it being lived in your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. So when you begin you're not as strong, 
But as you continue to grow in the Lord, if you look at those plants, they start out as little teeny old sprigglings. And before you know it, they're growing, they're getting thicker and stronger where they can almost hold the fruit on the vine without having to be propped up. Glory be to God. If you've ever grown tomatoes, you can see that they grow very tall, very tall plants. And once they get a certain height, you've got to have something to sustain them because uh, the fruit is so heavy. And that's a precious thing when we think about it, that we can bear fruit and it be so heavy, so wonderful for the glory of God that others will see, others will know that plant, that vine is really bearing good fruit. And so it increases. It starts out with one little tomato and then before you know it, it's four and five, six and seven of them. And that's how we are spiritually. You want one person to come. If you're a spouse, if you're a husband, if you're a wife, I'm talking to you. If you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, a family member, don't just sit idly by. Your desire ought to be <clears throat> that if you're saved, you want them to be. And you can work with them that they might become fruit that you can present before the Lord. Amen. And I thank God for the fact that even as I was younger, I was able to share with my siblings about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now all of them are saved. Many have gone on home to be with the Lord. Amen. And so when we look back and think about how good God is, how true he is to his word and his promises, why wouldn't you serve him? Why wouldn't you give your life wholeheartedly over to God and to the Lord Jesus Christ? I don't want to live in this life and not bear fruit. I don't want to live my whole life and not have one person say, he never said anything to me. He never shared anything with me. I was waiting for Bishop to say something. I was waiting for Bishop to share. Amen. And I thank God every opportunity that he's given to me to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even with our homeless ministry, they beg for us to come and to share the word of God. Amen. So I pray again and I ask for your prayers that you lift me up as I go to share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it is a progressive act and it increases as you progress in your spiritual maturity. First of all, <clears throat> there is fruit. There is more fruit and there is much fruit. And finally, there is lasting fruit. Do you see the process of progression? Fruit more fruit, much fruit, lasting fruit. And that's what we really want. We want lasting fruit. We want to have been able to touch the lives of individuals to the point where they have come, trusted the Lord, and stayed with the Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ indicates that true disciples bear spiritual fruit. Jesus teaches that every true Christian is chosen to bear spiritual fruit. Watch this. And no one is exempt. Don't you touch that phone or that dial. Amen. We'll be back again for the next portion of this sermon. Amen. Living to bear fruit. Amen. I'm praying for you. You pray for us here in Texas that we will continue to live for the Lord and continue to bear fruit to the glory of God. Amen. We love you, beloved, and continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand until we see you again. Be true to your walk and your faithfulness and your calling in Christ Jesus. God bless you.